Welcome to Hollywood Graveyard, where we set out to remember and celebrate the lives of those who lived to entertain us by visiting their final resting places. Today we conclude our tour of Forest Lawn Memorial Park in the Hollywood Hills, where we'll find such stars as Brittany Murphy, Dorothy L'Amour, Gene Autry, and many more. Join us, won't you? For this final stretch of our tour of Forest Lawn Hollywood Hills, we'll be visiting grave sites spread across the grounds of the cemetery, where, as we've seen, you're as likely to run into deer as you are to see a famous grave. I hope you have plenty of gas in the car, because we'll be doing as much driving as walking today. And if you haven't done so already, be sure to check out parts one and two. We'll pick up right where we left off at the end of part two, on the lawn just northwest of the Lincoln Terrace, known as Bright Eternity. Near the middle of this lawn, just east of a statue, is the grave of actress Brittany Murphy, who is remembered for roles in everything from comedies such as Clueless, to darker roles including Don't Say a Word, for which she received critical acclaim. She also provided the voice for Luann on the TV show King of the Hill. She died quite suddenly of pneumonia and anemia at just 32. Turning right on Ascension Road, we'll stop about halfway between the two T intersections. Stretch out those hamstrings because this hill is steep, and we're going most of the way up. Here we find filmmaker George Stevens, who was nominated for seven Academy Awards in his career, winning for A Place in the Sun and Giant. Other notable films include The Diary of Anne Frank. Continuing up this road, we'll stop at the T intersection. Straight up the hill from this intersection, just behind a large tree, is TV's Nelson family, Ozzie, Harriet, and Ricky. Patriarch Ozzie Nelson is best remembered for his role in the 1950s sitcom The Adventures of Ozzie and Harriet, which starred his real-life family, including wife and matriarch Harriet Hilliard Nelson. The show became synonymous with the ideal 1950s American family life. Through syndication, it remains to this day one of the longest-running live-action sitcoms in U.S. history. The show was a springboard for younger son Ricky, who grew from TV star into a teen music idol in the late 50s and early 60s. His first number one single, Poor Little Fool, was the first number one song on the newly created Billboard Hot 100 chart. I used to play around with hearts, pacing at my car. When I met that little girl, knew that I would fall, poor little fool. Oh yeah, I was a fool. He died in a plane crash at just 45. At the bottom of this hill, in the section of Enduring Faith, just northwest of the intersection, is the grave of actress Marjorie Maine, who is best remembered as Ma Kettle in the Ma and Pa Kettle series of films produced in the 40s and 50s. She was also nominated for an Academy Award for her role in The Egg and I. Continuing along this road a little further, up the hill on the south side, is Hollywood's most famous western sidekick, Gabby Hayes. He starred in nearly 200 films alongside some of Hollywood's greatest cowboys, including John Wayne and Hopalong Cassidy. Well, howdy, buckaroos. This is your old pal Gabby Hayes, coming at you with another one of them rip-roaring western yarns. <laughs> You're darn tootin'. Yes, sir -y Bob. Further up the road, we stop at the curve, in the sheltering hills section to the west. Here, near two tall trees, is a young girl whose story is more heartbreaking than any we've yet heard. Judith Barcy was a budding starlet who began acting when she was just five years old. She provided the voice for Ducky on The Land Before Time and Anne Marie on All Dogs Go to Heaven. Oh, Charlie, I'll miss you. Yeah, <coughs> I'll miss you too, Squeaker. Now you, you go to sleep, huh? Charlie, will I ever see you again? Sure, sure you will. You know, goodbyes aren't forever. Then, goodbye, Charlie. I love you. Sadly, she would not live to see either of these films completed. At just 10 years old, she and her mother were both shot and killed by her own father. The epitaph on her marker is the catchphrase gleefully spoken by young Judith as Ducky in The Land Before Time. My name's Littlefoot. Mine is Ducky. Yep, that is what it is. Yep, yep, yep. 
Continuing around the curve, we stop on the left right near a trash bin that resembles a tree trunk. Right next to the road is Noah Beery Jr., who is perhaps best remembered for his role as Joseph Rockford on The Rockford Files, a role which earned him three Emmy nominations. Just before the four-way intersection on the right, next to the road, is the grave of German expressionist Fritz Lang, who was a pioneer of early filmmaking. His groundbreaking 1927 film Metropolis is considered the first science fiction feature film, and his 1931 film M was a precursor to the noir genre. If you haven't seen either of these yet, here's a sneak peek at Metropolis, and one of the most beautiful scenes ever put to film. Across the street to the west, just a few rows in, is the grave of Roy Disney. Brother of Walt Disney, Roy believed in the vision of his younger brother from the start, becoming Walt's partner and business manager, helping to grow the company into what it is today. He was instrumental in securing funds for several of Walt's more ambitious endeavors, including the first animated feature film Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs in 1937, and Disneyland, which opened in 1955. Northwest from here, just past a large tree, is the grave of Smiley Burnett, a popular western actor, country musician, and often sidekick to Gene Autry. He wrote some 400 songs in his career, often singing them on screen and playing them on instruments of his own invention. He also starred as Charlie Pratt on Petticoat Junction. Continuing along this same row of graves, we find America's favorite singing cowboy, Gene Autry. Beginning in the 1930s, Gene became a staple on radio, in movies, and television. His show, The Gene Autry Show, ran from 1950 to 1956, and featured the song that would become his signature, Back in the Saddle Again. Whoopie tie I o rock him to and fro, back in the saddle again. He's also considered one of the most influential country music artists in history. Further west, at the next large tree, is the future grave of game show host Bob Barker, who hosted The Price is Right from 1972 until 2007. As of filming, Bob Barker is still alive, and I'm sure he'd like me to remind you to have your pets spayed and neutered. Still further west, a few rows up the hill, is the grave of actor Jack Webb, who is best known for his role as Sergeant Joe Friday on Dragnet. Way back at the four-way stop where we left the car, we continue southeast down Memorial Drive, the main road from the entrance. The lawn to the left is called Eternal Love, just past a large tree, and a not so large tree, is the grave of Asian American actor Jack Su. Born on a ship traveling from Japan to the US in 1917, Jack Su and his family lived in Oakland before being ordered into Japanese internment camps during World War II. Fellow internees recalled him as a camp favorite, entertaining others with song and dance. He soon made his way to Hollywood where he landed several television roles, most notably in the 1970s sitcom Barney Miller. Let's cross now to the northeast corner of this lawn. Sorry for the bumpy ride, the ground's really uneven. Right next to the road, we find the grave of Michael Hutchins, founding member and dynamic frontman of the Australian rock band In Excess. After his death in 1997, a portion of his cremated remains were interred here in California. He also has a grave in Australia, his home country. Their song, Never Tear Us Apart, played at his funeral. I was standing you were there, two worlds collided, and they could never, ever tear us apart. 
Further down Memorial Drive, right near the fork in the road, on the right side, is the grave of Dorothy L'Amour, the lovely and talented actress who joined Bing Crosby and Bob Hope on their adventures in the popular Road 2 series of films. The next section along this road is Murmuring Trees. Partway up the hill, just east of a tree, is the grave of musician Solomon Burke, who was a key figure in the development of R&B and soul music, and is considered one of the great soul singers of all time. His hits include Everybody Needs Somebody to Love and Cry to Me. Oh, come on, come on, cry to me. We'll pass the Old North Church and head to the eastern part of the cemetery, to the section known as Blessed Assurance. Hmm, this could be a problem. I don't want my shadow in the video. There we go. Much better. All the way up to the fence we find the grave of Miklos Roja, a three-time Oscar-winning composer who defined the sound of the epic film score during Hollywood's golden age. His films include Ben-Hur and The Thief of Baghdad. And the sun is back. That, my friends, is Hollywood magic. We now head to the northernmost section of the cemetery, known as Devotion. Here, just a stone's throw from Walt Disney Studios, is Disney legend Fred Moore. Fred started working as an animator for Disney in the 1930s and contributed to developing the unique look and style of the Disney animation that has become so iconic, including the redesign of Mickey Mouse to the look we know today. He animated the dwarfs in Snow White and Lampwick in Pinocchio, which is said to be a caricature of himself. He was also famous for his cartoon nudes, known as Freddy Moore Girls. They can be seen as the centaurettes in Fantasia and as the mermaids in Peter Pan. Our final stop is a long walk south. Giuseppe, a little walking music if you please. Ooh, that's nice. This is legendary Looney Tunes animator Tex Avery, who was instrumental in developing the distinctive Warner Brothers style of animation, and created many of its most beloved characters, including Daffy Duck and Droopy. He also helped develop Porky Pig. I couldn't have said it better myself. What are some of your favorite memories of the stars we visited today? Share them in the comments below, and be sure to like, share, and subscribe for more famous grave tours. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed our tour of Forest Lawn Hollywood Hills. Just a quick note here as we wrap up. As you may know, Carrie Fisher and Debbie Reynolds were recently interred here but we want to give the family time to grieve, so we won't be visiting them just yet. Someday though, so until then. May the force be with you. <laughs>